All right, welcome to tw uh, podcast 12.1. This is our chapter on gases. And so we're going to start right away with uh, the things that make gases unique. Um, and it's all due to the fact that the distance between the particles for a gas, whoops, pen's low down, is uh, just so great. I mean, if you could imagine looking on a molecular level, uh, you know, if we had some kind of vessel here, the gas particles, there's one here, one there, one there, one there, and so on and so on. I've even heard analogies where they say that if a, a gas par particle was the size of a baseball, the next closest gas particle would be a mile away. I don't know, I've never really worked it, the math out, but uh, anyways, that's what they say. So let's go over the exact properties that make them so unique. First of all, uh, we've got this, this one right here, gases are fluids. Now we think of fluids as being like liquids, and that's not the definition we're going for here. Um, because gases are uh, far apart, they can flow past one another. And if you look at this thing down here, this is a wing, and you can see the, the wind or the smoke going past the wing. It's flowing. And then if you've ever looked at a uh, campfire or smoke, you can see that it kind of flows. Now, I've got a, a, a simple little demonstration where I'm blowing out a candle with some air, and it will be in this podcast, or uh, you'll have to look it up on my demo thing, but it's called blowing, oops, blowing, wow, maybe I better try spelling that again, um, the, uh, blowing out a candle. Okay, hopefully I can insert it into this podcast, but I'm having a little difficulty with this. But the neat thing that it shows is that, that gas is really just flowing. When you're walking down the hallway, you are moving air. It is flowing by, and it's no different than when you, uh, if you're swimming in a pool. You're having to move uh, through the water. Same thing is happening on, uh, on this gas level. Now, I've got a really cool picture I got from a magazine. Now look at this thing. Uh, there's a couple things I love about this picture. One, here's the bullet fired from this gigantic gun. I imagine it's a 44 Magnum. But look at all the heat right in here. There's the heat, and then here's the stuff that's being expelled. But the cool thing about this, and you can read this caption, is that they made it so they could see the changes in the density of air, and so you can actually see the flows of the air flowing away and you can see it being pushed and again it just shows that that gases are fluids and again not in the sense of that they're liquids but that they flow the molecules flow past one another so there's our first property next property we have about gases is that gases have a very low density and because of that you can do cool things like this which I'm not sure I'll ever do you can go in a hot air balloon Helium balloons are really cool. It also allows you to play the greatest game ever in your living room, and that is don't let the balloon touch the floor. If you know what I'm talking about, you've played it before, it's really cool. And the reason that gases have a low density, if we think of the density equation, density equals mass over volume, well, think about a balloon, for example, just one of these. Just Let's say it's one you blew up. Well, what do you think it would weigh? I don't know, maybe it weighs 2.1 grams, all right? But what's its volume? Well, that might be 2.0 liters. Okay? So I divide uh, that number into that number. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, or let's, let's make it even more impressive. Since we're used to measuring things in milliliters, let's say that's 2,000 milliliters. Well, you can see you're going to get a very small number. And so gases have this real low density. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of... A lot of space and very few mo molecules. And uh, the fact that gases have low, a real low density brings us to this tragedy right here with this uh, lake. I, I think it's pronounced Nios. Um, there was a large uh, cloud of CO2 that was trapped underneath the lake here. And what happened is that something caused it to uh, come up. Well, carbon dioxide is is less dense than air so when it came out of the lake it just settled all in this area where all the people and livestock were and unfortunately it suffocated them okay all due to gases low density so there's two properties we have we've got one gases are fluid 
two gases have a low density. Let's go to another one. Okay, gases are highly compressible. Okay, again, hopefully I have a little video clip here. If not, you'll just have to look up the video uh, compressing a gas. Actually, it's my it's under my demo pile, and it just shows me compressing a gas. The amazing thing is, is gases can be compressed a hundred times. Okay, you can't compress a liquid, you can't compress a solid, but you can compress a gas, and the reason is. Gases are made up mostly of empty space. So what can we do with the fact that gases are a thousand times uh, compressible? Well, we could squish them into a ball, whether it be a football, basketball, volleyball, water polo balls, soccer ball, and so you can kick them, throw them, punt them, pass them, all that. Okay. Other thing, you could put a summer's worth of barbecue into a little tank and have barbecue all year long. And then the coolest thing, at least I think, is that you can go ahead and take up to an hour's worth of air into a nice little small tank here and you could breathe underwater. Now just imagine this tank right here. How many breaths would that be if gases weren't compressible? I don't know, maybe a couple? But the fact that you could compress a gas, there's I don't know what, what that holds, but I'm I imagine it's somewhere between an hour or a half hour and an hour. Okay? All because gases are highly compressible. Okay? So again, I'll show that on a syringe uh, if, if the video works. Okay? The next thing, gases completely fill their container. Okay? The, this is very apparent if someone were to put some perfume on in a room. It's only a matter of time before we can all smell it. In fact, I used to do this demo, but we have some sensitivity issues, so we don't do it anymore. But this is also why if you are in a room and someone is wearing a lot of cologne or perfume, it's only a matter of time before you can smell it. Because you can imagine you're in this room, okay, and here's our, here's our student sitting right here. Well, all the particles are flowing off in all different directions, right? Well, eventually they're coming over here, they're coming over here, they're coming over here, and they're just bouncing off the walls, and it's just a matter of time before we can all detect that cologne, okay? If I'm describing you, go easy on that stuff, okay? So, particles are moving very quickly, they're far apart, and they're not attracted to each other. That's part of the thing we're going to talk about in a, in a little bit called kinetic molecular theory. All right, so this is the first part of 12.1. Uh, I'm going to do another part with 12.1 in just a second, and uh, we'll see how that goes.